Jeff, what is the only material in the world that is not experiencing a supply chain issue these days? Well, given the challenges we're having with supply chain, that sounds a bit like a trick question, Tato. Why don't you tell me, what's the answer? Well, actually it's household waste. Humanity is producing every day hundreds of millions of tons of waste, and that is the raw material for UBQ. So we actually don't have any issues with our feedstock. That sounds like something that will make a great topic for a Looped In episode. Hi everyone, you're watching Looped In. This is a conversation series about unlocking the power of the circular economy. As an industry, we're very much aware of the seriousness and the scale of the waste problem that we're currently facing all around the world. At Dow, we're working to be the most innovative and sustainable material science company out there. And we know that we have to work on waste. But we also know that we can't do it alone. We need to work on sustainability with other people and other organizations if we want to make real change in the world. So I'm pleased today to be joined by Tado Biggio, co-founder of UBQ Materials, who's very passionate about the circular economy, as I am, and is working to contribute to solving the waste challenges that we have globally. Tato, welcome to the show today, and thank you for joining us. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about UBQ? Happy to be with you. Uh, UBQ is a, a materials advanced company that has developed a revolutionary conversion process, which enables us to take the entirety of the household waste, the mix of all materials that composes our, our bag of waste, the foodstuff, the cardboard, the paper, the mixed plastic, all of it together and convert that stream into a homogeneous, consistent thermoplastic material that can be used by the plastic industry to make end products. So Tato, tell us what it is that you're really doing. What are you actually implementing? What is it that makes UBQ different? Uh, what's special about your solution? Um, just kind of give us some more information that helps us understand the impact that you're having. Yes, the UBQ technology uh, is unique in the sense that we're using 100% of the materials uh, that compose our household waste. So as opposed to the typical recycling te technologies where, where you need to separate the different streams in order to recycle them into themselves, paper into paper, recycle, uh, cardboard into cardboard, recycle, plastics, and divide them by the different types of plastics. I think it's a great point that you make about how plastic is just one component of waste and how waste it really includes lots of different things. We hear people talking about plastic waste as an issue, but we've got to take care of all the waste if we really want to solve this, this problem for society. You know, there's so much opportunity out there for innovation and growth and new technologies, new infrastructure uh, for recycling, for processing materials, for turning old materials into new materials and making them something of value. At Dow, we've recently focused on this infrastructure development uh, through our investment in closed loop circular plastics fund. So this investment hopes to accelerate scalable recycling technologies and all kinds of new infrastructure solutions, which we think are important to solving the problem. At scale, uh, we hope that the fund is able to uh, invest more than $100 million to uh, accelerate these types of solutions. Of course, it's managed by closed loop partners. And, uh, and the goal for the program is to recycle over 500 million pounds of plastic uh, over the lifetime of the fund. So one of the things that we hear about often, uh, in fact, is scale and how we scale technologies, how we take new technologies and make them bigger to make them even more impactful. Um, sometimes people who don't work in the innovation space are a bit skeptical until they see proof that things really work. Um, Tato, can you give us maybe some examples of what you're doing to help scale your solutions and, uh, and how you're making a bigger impact, um, both in the short and the medium term? From the early stages of the uh, development of this technology, uh, we understood that we, we had to be able to scale it out. In other words, to have an industrial scale module that will enable us to complete the development and then uh, repeat, copy paste it, uh, not only in Israel where we started, but uh, elsewhere. So in a way we can take uh, modules and put them one next to the other and just expand our capacity by having more physical space. Uh, the, the basic uh, unit of uh, conversion unit, our reactor is a 1.5 ton per hour reactor. And in Israel, we are handling one unit. The next step, uh, which is uh, expanding our company in, in Europe, uh, will involve a factory in the Netherlands uh, that will have uh, six lines 
basically nine tons per hour, which translates into something like 75,000 tons of UVQ material per year. Uh, and basically what we're doing is copy pasting six times the whole line of UVQ, obviously with some uh, efficiencies in the downstream and the upstream of the machines uh, that enables us to be even more cost efficient. But that is the way we develop the technology. So basically scaling is not an issue except for physical space and energy. Yeah, so it sounds like with this sort of modular units, uh, it's practically a limitless on how big you can scale. Do you have any plans for how big you think the organization will be in a few years? Yes, look, we know that uh, there's plenty of ways there, <laughs> regrettably, and only growing. Uh, and we know that the consumption of materials, plastics and others, is, is also only, only growing as, uh, as, you know, as economic conditions improve and our population increases. Uh, so uh, basically, the, the challenge for us is an organizational challenge, but maybe also a financial challenge, uh, creating a support system uh, to build more factories faster and in, uh, and in ma many places as possible. Uh, the idea would be to try and use local ways to convert it into UVQ material to supply local new industries with their own ways. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, UVQ materials, like any other thermoplastic, which is applied in pellets, can be shipped uh, uh, everywhere in the world. So we'll have to establish a big organization also to be able to trade that material in an efficient manner. The idea would be to establish every year uh, one or two plants. Uh, in the next years, and as I told you before, the challenge is more organizational and uh, financial than anything else. Great. Well, I'm glad to hear that uh, you're well on your way to scaling. We know that waste is not the only important thing to think about when we think about sustainability. Uh, we know that the social part is very important. We know that carbon is very important and, and uh, limiting the impact of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in our atmosphere to, to prevent uh, un, uh, unhealthy climate change. At Dow, we've committed to reducing our carbon footprint by 5 million tons a year by 2030, um, 5 million metric tons per year. That's about 15% of our 2020 baseline. And we're committed to becoming a net zero by 2050. You know, And seeing those things in action that we're implementing right now, like building a, a zero carbon a polyethylene complex, for example, really brings me hope about the future and about the opportunities that companies have to help deliver a more sustainable future to society. Um, Tato, tell me what you think about uh, the future for sustainability and for society. What, what gives you hope about the future for sustainability? In the last years, I, uh, I can see a shift in the perception about, uh, about uh, the, you know, the, the environment, the damages that we're creating every day uh, with our kind of linear economy of extraction, consumption, and then uh, just disposal. Uh, you feel that companies, brands, uh, are responsive to customers. Uh, some of the big brands of the world have approached UVQ, uh, uh, you know, to integrate UVQ material in their product lines, something that was difficult in the past because the shift of changing materials where you're used to your polypropylene, you're used to your polyethylene, uh, uh, and all of a sudden you, you need to make a shift. You need to do something. So it opened up uh, an opportunity. Uh, and we're seeing it more and more. Uh, today we're working with uh, big players like Mercedes-Benz, McDonald's, Keter Plastics, uh, Rocklin, uh, uh, Carmel Olefins. And I also feel that the, you know, the new generation, the Z generation, X generation, uh, our kids are, are, are the ones that are gonna be uh, pushing this even further. That's great. When do you think you might open your first plant in the US? Following the, the establishment of the plant in the Netherlands, we will definitely uh, go uh, to the U.S. market. For, for us, it's a very central market. The ecosystem in, in Europe is a little easier for a startup like us. Uh, in a way, we're, we, we're moving from a startup phase into a commercial phase. Uh, the challenges in Europe are easier for us to establish the first plant. The next one will definitely be in, in the United States. That's great to hear. Yeah, we certainly uh, think it's a great sign that the entire value chain is engaged in trying to solve the sustainability challenges that we face today, including the waste problem that we face. It's been great talking with you today, Tato. You're doing really impactful work, and it's great to hear about all the things that UBQ is doing to help us eliminate the waste problem. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks for sharing everything with us. And thanks, everybody, for watching. 
Be sure to check out other episodes of Looped In where we have conversations with Seventh Generation, with Bogo Brush, with the Junk Luggers, and with many others. You can find those episodes at dow.com slash looped in.